Thank you, Reese, and welcome everybody to ESPN's presentation of the 2013 Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Tonight, a matchup of two teams that took opposite paths to their identical records of seven and five, and they're meeting for the first time ever. More than 250 years of combined football history. It's Michigan and Kansas State, and the Wolverines are ready to take the field. Season started very well for Michigan. They opened at 5 and 0. Oh, they were ranked number 11 in the country, thinking about a Big Ten title, but they struggled for Brady Hoke in the second half of the season. They arrive having lost four of their last five. Unlike Michigan, Kansas State started the season slowly the Wildcats were two and four to begin the year and they arrive here in Tempe winners of five of their last six and they found their offense over the second half of the season they've scored 30 or more points in each of those last six games returning to Arizona for the second year in a row K-State was the Big 12 champion last year and played in the Fiesta Bowl they lost to Oregon in that game. They hope for a better experience tonight here in the Valley of the Sun. And as always, the Wildcats travel very well. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Sean McDonough along with Chris Spielman will be joined shortly by Shannon Spake. Delighted to have you with us. These two teams have a lot in common beyond the record seven and five. They both averaged right around 33 points per game and interesting situations at the quarterback position. Tonight for Michigan, it'll be the true freshman, Shane Morris, making his first career start as he steps in for the injured Devin Gardner. Well, we talked to him yesterday, Sean. He's composed and he's ready for this moment. But when you look at Shane and talking to Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, he's a guy that has a powerful arm. He can make all the throws. Now, it is vital for Shane Morris to have a very good first quarter. Well, how do you do that? By play calling, short passes, and Michigan was very successful with screen passes against Ohio State, so I look for that. But the one thing he needs more than anything else is protection from the offensive line that's been inconsistent and also the ability to run the football to take some pressure off of Shane. He appeared briefly in three games during the regular season. He's had about a month to get ready for this assignment. Devin Gardner was hurt in their final game of the regular season and hasn't practiced since. Meanwhile, we think it's still a two quarterback situation for Kansas State. Bill Snyder has said that's not his preference, but that's the way it's been all season long. Although in recent weeks, Daniel Sams, the running quarterback, hasn't played that much. Jake Waters has been the starter all year long. Yeah, all but seven plays the last two games, and Jake Waters gives them the most balance. He can throw the ball downfield on the ground, 270 yards rushing and six touchdowns with his feet. So he gives them the best option, I think, to win this football game. And he's going to throw to a dangerous wide receiver, an explosive wide receiver, and Tyler Lockett. The thing I like about Tyler is that he's very patient in his route running. Right there, you see him sell the double move. And he has sure solid hands and catches the ball under pressure. Also, this is where you like to see Tyler work out in space one on one. He works back to the football. He can make people miss and he knows what to do with the run after catch. And of course, any good receiver will never drop one when nobody's covering him. And Tyler Lockett is that good. From a great K-State family is dad Kevin, the all time leading receiver in Wildcat history. Kansas State and Michigan. And the kickoff from the Valley of the Sun right after this. We're back at Sun Devil Stadium. First meeting between these two schools. 43rd bowl appearance for Michigan. First time they played one in December since 2005, which is also the last time they played a team from the Big 12. They lost the Alamo Bowl to Nebraska. Most of K-State's bowl history under the legendary Bill Snyder, and as we mentioned, they lost here in the Valley last year. Down on the field, here is Shannon Spate. 
Well, Sean, before the season began, former Michigan quarterback and three-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady, he talked to this Michigan team, and Shane Morris, who grew up a Michigan fan and a Tom Brady fan, had a chance to spend some time with him one-on-one, -on -one, got some advice. Brady told him, lead by example, show up, work hard, and everyone will follow you. And Morris has really used that advice over the last few weeks as he's prepared for tonight. He's practiced with the first team during the entire bowl practice, film, film, and more film. Watched him during warm-up, seemed very loose, was having a good time. Devin Gardner was down here with him as well, had some advice. He said, don't let the moment get too big. Be yourself. And the defense will take the field first for Michigan. They won the toss and deferred, so Kansas State elected to get the ball. Matt Weil kicks off. Too deep for the dangerous Tyler Lockett to run it out. So here comes the K-State offense led by Jake Waters in his first year at Kansas State. He's from Council Bluffs, Iowa, junior. He's a junior college transfer, won a national championship with Iowa Western last year as the National Junior College Player of the Year. Throws the ball down the field. 16 yards per completion, fourth best in the country. They'll run, 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 try to draw the defense up and then throw it over their heads. John Hubert is the running back, one of the best in the history of K-State. A pass from Waters on first down. He throws a sinker low and away, intended for Tyler Lockett. Flag down on the play. Along the line of scrimmage, far Outside. side of the field. Defense, number 55. A five-yard penalty. We play first down. Malayan Clark leading a Pac-12 officiating crew. Usually you get a little bit of a warning there to get back after one play. They're calling him off sides. Well, if you're offside, you're offside. Yes, sir. The I'm first with you. play or the last. I'm just telling you how it works. Really? You usually get a mulligan on the first play if you're <laughs> offside? That's, they tell you, hey, you want to scoot back a little bit. All right. Design run for Waters. And he gets driven back. Brennan Byers, the defensive end, junior from Canton, Michigan. Made the stop. Been an up and down year on defense for the Wolverines. Their stats aren't as good as last year, even though their defensive coordinator, Greg Madison, believes this is a more talented bunch. The problem has been surrendering the big plays. They've given up 49 plays this year of 20 yards or more. That's 14 more than last year when they gave up the fewest plays of that variety in the country. Hubert, very close to the first down at the 35-yard line. And one of the things, Sean, where you look at where Michigan was hurt in the Ohio State game where they gave up over 300 yards rushing was up the middle. And the reason why they were hurt up the middle is they weren't gap sound. And so far, two running plays between the tackles, they've been in the right spots and limiting the gains. And spotted Huber just short, so here's a third down in inches. And Waters keeps. He's 6'1", 210 pounds. That's a Michigan defense that for most of the year done a good job stopping the run. But boy, did that change in a hurry in the regular season finale. That excruciating one-point loss to Ohio State when the Buckeyes rushed with 393. And it was just a matter of one or two guys being out of position and being exploited by Ohio State, and that's what Kansas State tried to do. Their first two running plays, and so far, Michigan seems to have that fixed early on in this ballgame. Fullback Glenn Gronkowski is in the game. Leading the way for Huber to get swung back by Desmond Morgan, the middle linebacker, junior from Holland, Michigan. Hubert starts the night needing just 32 yards rushing for a 1,000-yard season. He's a senior and just under 1,000 yards the last two years, 900-plus. And he said reaching 1,000 would be the dream come true. From Waco, Texas, where he broke all of Ladanian Tomlinson's high school rushing records. Waters throws, caught at the 42-yard line by Terrell Miller, his 12th catch of the year. Better throw that time by Waters. 
based on timing the same play they ran the first play of the ball game where his timing was off a little bit got in a little bit better rhythm and was able to deliver a strike. Third down and four. They're a good third down team, 48%. Best in the Big 12, number 16 in the country. Lay clock at three. And it's a strike to lock it. And Chris, the Michigan coaches knew this was coming. Greg Madison told us yesterday when they go trips to one side and leave Lockett alone on the other side, they want to throw it to Lockett. Yeah, and what I love about that, Sean, is he's patient. His route running, he gave Ramon Taylor, who cannot give up the inside on that slant. He gave it up. Lockett has that quick little burst and the knowledge to sit it down inside of the zone. Outstanding route, perfectly timed pass. Now Gronkowski is again offset and shifts to the right side of Waters. No gain on that play. Joe Bolden, a linebacker, sophomore from Cincinnati, up to make the stop. And impact players, they don't switch their corners, Chris, from side to side. It'll be counters to the field most of the night. So. Both Taylor and Countess will have to deal with Tyler Lockett. Yeah, and they have to be able to get hands on him because if he has room to work, he's very difficult to cover downfield. So the best way to do, do that would be disrupt the route. Lockett averages 104 yards per game receiving. 11th in the nation. On second and 10, Waters throws incomplete. Ball could not be caught by Tremaine Thompson. Near the first down marker, rare drop for the senior, was 28 catches this year. Well, this is why Waters is in the ball game and has played but all seven, but seven plays the last two games, because he throws strikes and he throws the ball accurately down the field. Normally a play that Tremaine will make. What other third down, third and ten. Here comes a late rush. Waters runs away and has plenty of room. A first down and much more. Tripped up by DeMonte Thomas. They're going to mark him down at the 23-yard line. A gain of 21. Well, it starts with outstanding protection. You have number four, Cam Gordon, coming in there. The last contained man. Waters just dips underneath. And the patience to let routes develop downfield. Everybody's getting depth. Sees the open space and able to get the first down with his legs. We told you he can run and he's very effective when he has that opportunity. Another play of 20 plus given up by the Michigan defense. Swung out to Thompson who drops another. Was that a lateral? The officials conferring and now blowing it incomplete. Apparently just barely a forward pass. A shaky start for Tremaine Thompson playing in his last game for Kansas State. A little bit behind him, but one that Tremaine normally catches and also very dangerous with run after catch. Had the ball for more than five minutes on this opening drive. They're three for three on third down. Inside handoff to Hubert. Spins off a tackle. Delivers a stiff arm to Raymond Taylor and goes out of bounds with a first down and goal inside the 10-yard line. Well, again, right up the middle in the A gap, and they run a little stunt, and Frank Clark gets caught up inside. He's responsible for that A gap. He got nosy, peaked in the opposite A gap, and he just misses. And Hubert, Sean, vision and balance with a little spin move. Very explosive runner once he gets to the second level. Like his team, he's had an up and down year. There's Daniel Sams now, the backup quarterback, in to take the snap. He's much more of a running threat. And he takes off running. And a flag is thrown into the offensive line. He was run down by Jared Wilson and Jake Ryan. Holding offense number 73. 
10 yard penalty. Tavon Brooks, the right tackle. Part of a very talented and veteran offensive line. He's a senior. Honorable mention all Big 12 at right tackle, making his 23rd career start. Jake Ryan coming off of a knee injury. Showed good speed and recovery, and it's good to see him back to 100%. Tore his ACL in spring practice. They thought he'd be out for a year. That happened on March 19th. He was back seven months later. Still Sam's at quarterback. And no surprise that he runs. And he is the quarterback. They run the ball 79% of the time, an 85% run on first down with Sam's in there. Very effective. And the thing. If you're Michigan, you have to stay disciplined because he can throw the football thrown for 452 yards this year. So he's effective throwing it, but obviously you play the percentages and put yourself in the best run defense you have. He was the leading rushing quarterback in the Big 12 and eighth overall in rushing in the conference. Second and goal from the 13 has room running to his left. Lowered his shoulder and ran over Thomas Gordon. Ben Gideon, the true freshman, also in on the stop. And another third down for K-State. They've taken up almost half of the first quarter on this opening drive. Again, here comes Waters back into the ball game, so Greg Madison will counter and run a defense that's pass effective. Play the percentages with those quarterbacks. Three wide receivers. John Hubert, the running back on the left hip of Jake Waters. A blitz for Michigan. Ryan got in his face, but too late. Touchdown, Tyler Lockett. How about that drive? 15 plays, 75 yards, four for four on third down. They used up more than half of the first quarter clock. Ian Patterson on to try the extra point. He's the backup kicker. Their starter, Jack Cantelli, been bothered by lower body injuries late in the year. So Patterson has taken over. He's now nine for nine in PATs as the replacement. Another touchdown reception for the junior from Tulsa, Tyler Lockett, his ninth of the year. 7-0 Wildcats. Seven nothing, Kansas State has the early lead. They lost their last five bowl games. And that's been the major topic of conversation back in Manhattan, Kansas. Bill Snyder, when they qualified for a bowl and discovered where they were going, asked his team in a team meeting, how many of you have ever won a bowl game? Nobody raised their hand. Wow. They came out ready to go tonight. Ian Patterson kicks off. Dennis Norfleet got an excellent year. Running back kicks. And he takes that one back to the 37 yard line the kicker Patterson had to make the tackle 33 yard return by Norfleet and here's a look at our Buick drive recap very impressive drive key play was the 21 yard run by Jake Waters on the scramble Hubert took them inside the 10 yard line right and on third down Waters found Tyler Lockett. They were four for four on third down. So here's Shane Morris, the true freshman. Hazel Park, Michigan. His first career start comes out swinging with a little easy pass to Justice Hayes. And he's chopped down at a 50. The coaches told us we'll see a lot more of Justice Hayes. That's just his fourth catch of the year. He's been terrific in ball practice. He brings a little speed and quickness 
And a nice start for Morris, Chris. They gave him something easy. Well, they were successful running screens against Ohio State. That helps the offensive line. You don't have to block as long. An easy throw for Shane Morris to get him in a little bit of rhythm and confidence for the young, true freshman. Played very briefly in three games earlier this year. Most of that action in the opener against Central Michigan. Jeremy Gallon turns the corner. Another easy play for the quarterback to execute. And he's out of bounds at the 43 of K-State. A seven-yard gain. Morris, 6'3", 201-pounder, a lefty. And Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, said, unlike most left-handers, he's not a soft thrower. He is a powerful arm, highly recruited. Four- or five-star recruit out of De La Salle High School in Warren, Michigan, just outside Detroit, depending on which service you leaned on. ESPN had him as a four-star recruit. One of the top quarterbacks in the country in the class of 2013. Another screen. Jake Buck down the numbers and inside the 20-yard line. Alana Finau made the tackle and credit Al Borges with a terrific plan to give Morris a very comfortable start. Gain of 24. Yeah, Jake Butts, another true freshman that's coming on. And what you got to be impressed with with Morris is that he's taking his time and he's patient and he's allowing the play to develop and set up where a lot of times true freshmen might get in a hurry. Right there, executed well by taking his time and letting Butt get open for the screen. They seem very poised when we visited with him yesterday, but it's a different story out there starting on national TV in a bowl game. Hayes tripped across the 21-yard line. He's fast, so he was a little anxious to be even faster. Just an important point about bowl practice and competition. Justice Hayes earned his playing time in bowl practice. He'd really been their fourth string running back. And only one rush and three catches all year. Sophomore from Flint. See veteran running back coach Freddie Jackson there to meet him with a smile just to keep him relaxed and calm. Loss of a half yard. It's Gerald Toussaint now at running back. Gallon reverse. Devin Funches with blockers, including Morris. And he went out of bounds. Couldn't walk the tightrope along the far sideline. But he didn't make it beyond the marker for a first down. It'll be first and goal for Michigan from the six after a 14-yard game. Well, this is set up again. They ran a play to Gallon. Now they have a counter off that. The double reverse to Funches. But what I'd like to see is number seven, Shane Morris, a true freshman. You want to get your lineman blocking for you? You show effort and toughness at getting the block downfield on a double reverse, you'll get their respect in a hurry. Well, Michigan trying to answer the impressive opening drive by K-State with one of their own, the powerful Davion Smith, the running back, and they run him inside. And he was greeted rudely on his first carry of the night, Travis Britz, and the linebacker Will Davis in on the stop. It's an all Big 12 defensive lineman. Fast moving first quarter, under four minutes to go, second and goal. Davion Smith, freshman, remains the running back on the right hip now. They faked it to him. Morris threw that high fastball, a little bit too hot for. Jeremy Gallon with Kip Daly in coverage and the Michigan fans wanted a flag. I like the fact Sean that he tried to throw it in there. Now he threw he threw the 90 95 miles per hour here but that's all right because he has the confidence to try to squeeze a ball into tight coverage and you want to see that that ball was on target just a little bit too hot for Jeremy Gallon. Morris now three for four on the drive his first incompletion fits Tucson back at running back. Mike Funches down here, number 87. Big target. Morris lofts it up for him, one on one, and it's incomplete. Well covered by Dorian Roberts. Former walk on, like so many of these Wildcats, they've done well over the years with the walk on program. Some of their best players on this team came to K State without a scholarship. And it's fourth and goal, and Brady Hoke's going to send the field goal unit out. 
Just on the walk-on thing, Sean, that's coaching. I mean, they do a great job of developing players, and nobody develops junior college players first year in their program better than K-State has done over the years. That wild, the backup kicker for most of the year, Brendan Gibbons not here, home tending to a family matter, so it's wild kicking the field goal. He's now two for four this year. 22-yarder. Brady Hoax, Wolverines on the board at 7 to 3. The 2013 Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports. The Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. And Dodge, hurry in for a great deal at the Dodge Big Finish event. Earlier this evening, the fans enjoying the tailgate area put on by Buffalo Wild Wings outside Sun Devil Stadium. Buffalo Wild Wings has made sports viewing a focal point in their restaurants all over the country. It's a great game day destination. Remember when we did a game at Michigan earlier this year, we went to the Buffalo Wild Wings, watched some games close to the Eastern Michigan campus just down the road. Yeah, we both had a great meal. I know how much you enjoyed it. I did. Michigan kicks off Matt Weil line drive kick so it is returnable for Tyler Lockett for career kickoff returns for touchdowns and the kicker Matt Weil made the tackle so both kickoff men have had a tackle in this game Lockett showed why he was the Big 12 special teams player of the year this year. It's 36 nine cards. Yeah, Charlie Strong had him out there throwing the ball over the field with a 36 to 9 lead late in the game. It would have been hard to explain. Thank goodness something bad didn't happen to Teddy from an injury standpoint. Pass is deflected and still caught. Caught by the tight end, Andre McDonald. They love this play, a little pop pass. Uh, scored two touchdowns against Kansas this way. And actually, it's a run pass option. Jake Waters sells it by running and then looks for the tight end. If he's open, he delivers the football. Good concentration by McDonald on the tip ball drill. Just his third catch of the year. It's deflected by Desmond Morgan, the linebacker. Jake Waters, four for six so far. They marched down the field on their opening drive. After a 40 yard kickoff return and a 10 yard pass, they're in midfield already. John Hubert threw a big hole. Another first down as he went for 11 taken down by Thomas Gordon and Raymond Taylor. Well a gaps and that's where Kansas State is attacking. James Ross the third jumps outside. There was an on block safety coming up to his left. He has to jump inside of that lead blocker to bounce the ball to the on block player. That's a player doing his own thing not doing a team thing. And a thing that they've harped on for a month after they got gouged by Ohio State. In part because they were in the wrong gap too often. There was an example of it again. Hubert down to the 35 yard line, gain of four. You know, one thing I picked up in film, Sean, is Cornelius Lucas, and, and it's not, uh, it's almost 100%, but when his feet and shoulders are square to the line of scrimmage, it's run. When you see that left foot way back, it's pass. So if you're Michigan, especially if you're playing over him, you can give yourself a little help in reading the pass to get yourself in a pass rush stance to get off on the ball and go after the quarterback as opposed to playing run. So does that look like a run to you? That left foot isn't way back. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's a pass, yeah. And it goes to the far side of Lockett, who swung out of bounds, but it looked like Lockett, with the effort, got the first down, despite the effort of Raymond Taylor to stop him shy of the marker. You, you think about the attack of Kansas State, and I love offensively what they do by moving Lockett around. And if I'm Greg Madison, I know you like to play field and boundary, but Lockett is working on Raymond Taylor. You might want to move Countess over there, who may be your best cover guy in the team, to match up a little bit. I don't think Greg thinks there's a huge difference between the two. 
We asked him yesterday about Countess. He said he's had a good year, not a great year, coming back from a knee injury. Deep throw, lock, it's open. Touchdown. He got behind Blake Countess. Well, I'll take that back because it's a double move. <laughs> he's that good. Watch the double move. And the thing when he runs a double move, he's so patient. He's going to sit down and chop his feet to get the corner to sit with him. Watch the chop feet, sit down, sell it. Then he avoids the contact by Countess and is able to get to the open area. And once again, Jake Waters delivers the catchable strike for six. There's Kevin Lockett, his dad. Looks like he could still play. Still the all-time leading receiver at K-State. Kevin's brother Aaron, Tyler's uncle, also in the top five in career receptions at K-State. Ian Patterson adds the extra point. Second touchdown of the game for Lockett here in the first quarter. This one from 29 yards. He has four catches already. 14-3, Cats. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. 14-3, Kansas State as Ian Patterson kicks off. Dennis Norfleet, not one back 33 yards earlier. He gets stood up at the 22-yard line. Well covered by K-State, just a 16-yard return. The second possession for Michigan, led by the true freshman, Shane Morse. Probably gets a lot of confidence off that first possession, driving the team down for a field goal. I like the way Al Bohr just called that first series for him, Sean. A lot of screen passes, quick routes. Morris under center. Sione Homa fullback. And Justice Hayes in the backfield, and they threw it to Homa. He got chopped down by the safety and one of the best in the country. Ty Zimmerman, senior, playing in his last game. Four-time All-Big 12 selection. Missed the last two games with a leg injury. But has come back to play tonight. It's been reported it was a fractured fibula. Suffered in game 10 against TCU. Second year in a row, he got hurt in the 10th game against TCU, and he returned last year in time to play in the bowl game against Oregon. And he's a tough kid. What I love about him, just watching on film, is his intelligence, never out of position. These two teams going up and down the field, and it was quite an opening quarter for Tyler Lockett. Four catches for 55 yards, two of them touchdowns. That 29-yarder, another big play given up this year by Michigan. Back at the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl in Tempe, Arizona. A very pleasant night here in the Valley of the Sun. K-State leads 14-3 as we go to the second quarter. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, and Shannon Spake. Shane Morris under center. Play action pass, Jeremy Gallup. First down, picked it up with a yard to spare to the 34-yard line. That's the school record all by himself, 39 straight games with a catch. He shared that record with Braylon Edwards. I think Jeremy Gallup's going to be an excellent NFL player at the slot receiver position. Tough kid. Runs inside, great hands. 19 straight games now with multiple receptions for Gallon. Drew Dillio in trouble. Lunges ahead for about a half yard. Ty Zimmerman up from his safety spot again. Solid start for Shane Morris, who grew up. About 45 minutes from the University of Michigan campus. A huge Wolverine fan. As a matter of fact, he committed to Michigan in May of his sophomore year in high school. Highly touted prospect. ESPN rated him the number eight pocket passer in his class. Even though he's a true freshman, the 
players on the Michigan team said it feels like he's been around for a long time. He'd show up at practices from time to time when he was in high school as a junior and senior. Gallon kept it and got smothered for a loss back at the 30-yard line. Travis Britz blew up the play. Well, again, this is the counter off the double reverse counter. They try to fake it with Gallon keeping it and you know, if you read it, it looked like he should have probably pitched it again to Funch just to see if they got that double reverse fixed. But Travis Britz would have nothing of it. Sean, I look for it in not this series, but next series, maybe have Shane Moore start throwing the ball down the field a little bit. He's got the rhythm, he's got the timing with the receivers, and he's in the game. Go ahead and let him let that cannon loose. Loss of five, third down and 14. Four-man rush, K-State plays coverage, and they don't cover. First down, Gallon got it by a yard. Yanked down by Jonathan Truman. It starts with protection right here. This is where Michigan has struggled somewhat, but you see, when you see Shane Moore step up into the pocket, keep his eyes on receivers downfield, not thinking about panicking and running the football, allowing Gallon to work within the zone to get open, and he did throw a nice ball. Good sign for the Wolverine offense protection and Morris working just as Hayes in there we led to believe they might have some trick plays when Justice Hayes is on the field that involve Hayes directly that time the ball got flipped to Norfleet and they got about nine run down by Blake Slaughter the middle linebacker senior sat out last year redshirted his own decision because he's playing behind a great player Arthur Brown he sat out a year and got a chance to play, and he's been their leading tackler. He was all Big 12 this year. Good, solid, and instinctive player. Second and one, Davion Smith. The power back in there. Woo, he got plastered and might not have gotten the first down. Lana Finau hit him up high. Travis Britz had him down low. Good job of Finau not getting too far up the field, closing down the line of scrimmage and getting his helmet in front of the ball carrier. When you do that, nine times out of ten, the ball carrier either goes backwards or sideways, just like he did. Another junior college player in his second year at K-State out of Cerritos College. He's from Compton, California. They just did get the first down. Fitzgerald Tucson back in there. Looks like they're trying to set up a screen to him. And it's a fastball that Tucson couldn't handle. Well, You're right, Chris. They're about due to fire one down the field. Yeah, and you set up enough screens in Kansas State. Adjust that time. Shaquille Reed came off of his pass rush, started looking for screens. So when you have your defensive lineman looking for screens, you'll be able to cover them. And Shane Morris did a good job of throwing that away, understanding that Reed was sitting right on the receiver. Morris is eight out of 11. They've run only five running plays, but the throws have been safe for the most part. Movement along the line, so far no flags down. Morris fires one deep for Gallon over his head, and there's a flag down. Looked like he was being grabbed by Dorian Roberts. The official also threw his hat What I loved about that play with Shane Morris is that he surveyed the whole field. Looked to his left. Pass interference. Defense number four. A 15-yard penalty. It's an automatic first down. And comes back to his right. And the receivers never quit on this play. Right here, Dorian Roberts is grabbing the neck line of Jeremy Gallon. He does not need to do that. Why? Because he's in position. And as a defensive back, you have to trust your techniques. Don't grab just to grab. Jane Morris has looked poised and confident throughout. Wildcats showing blitz. And they bring it off the corner. And Tucson ran right into it for a loss of about a yard. It's really staggering when you think about the history of Michigan football, how poorly they have run the ball this year, averaging 131 yards per game rushing. That's 100th in the country. Despite the fact they have two offensive tackles, they believe will both play in the NFL. Taylor Lewan there on the left of your screen. 
is the two-time Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year. He'll be a very high draft pick. Came back for his senior season. Wanted to play in the Rose Bowl and win a Big Ten championship. Instead, he's playing in his hometown of Phoenix. Morris all day to throw. And found butt. Jake got to the 29. Then it'll be third down and nine. You know, one of the reasons why they struggled running the football is they've had five different starting combinations along that offensive line. Two tackles have been solid, but they have not settled in on guard, center guard. Now, this is the third game where they have those starters playing together with those three positions. Eric Magnuson, the left guard. Graham Glasgow, the center. Kyle Kalis, the right guard. Help pave the way for 603 yards of offense against Ohio State. Morris on target again. Boy, has he been impressive, and Funches has the first down inside the 15-yard line. Now, I think he intended this to throw the ball behind because you see Roberts sitting inside. So as a quarterback, you throw your receiver open, you see the corner sitting outside, you throw to the outside shoulder, and Funches tells you why he's one of the best slot tight ends there is in the country, much like Jason Morrow from Texas Tech, who Kansas State is familiar with. Funches won the award as the top tight end in the Big Ten this year. Paul at Clark Award. Davion Smith. Again, they just cannot run the ball. Eight yards rushing now for Michigan. And Blake Slaughter was there first. How sweet a name is that for a middle linebacker? I know that's probably been said a hundred times with being an next middle linebacker. I just slaughter. Played behind Arthur Brown last year, was an All-American, now a rookie. Second round pick of the Baltimore Ravens. Slaughtered 15 tackles in the regular season finale. Their win at Kansas. Morris looks like a busted play. Maybe not. There's Jake Butt. Down to the eight-yard line. Dante Barnett made the tackle. Safety for K-State. No panic, though, by Shane Morse. Messed up the read and the ball handling and the carrying out of the fake, but got himself in position to deliver a catchable ball to Jake Butt. Just joining us, first career start for the true freshman Morris. Devin Gardner out with turf toe and injury in the regular season finale against Ohio State. Wow. I don't like that play. <laughs> well, they yeah. look like they tried to run Kansas State's play. Yeah, a little bit of a speed option there, and I don't think Shane trusts his right hand to make the pitch, so he's going to go with the golden thing, and that's his left arm. At least he delivered a catchable ball on Justice Hayes. Mm, took a long time to develop when you're running that play into the boundary. And stopped just inside the 10-yard line, so Wiles on for the second time. Twenty six yard try hit one earlier from twenty two junior from San Diego two nice drives for Michigan each has ended in a field goal it's fourteen to six K State. Most last game for Mac Brown. Texas in the Valero Alamo Bowl Monday 645 Tyler Lockett brought it back to the 41 again the kicker Matt Wiles had to make the tackle 34 yard return is Shannon Spake. Well, Sean, defensive coordinator for Michigan, Greg Madison, he told us the key for this game would be to not give up the big plays. They've given up 140 yards of offense. And over here on the sideline, a lot of questions to the defense. Brady Hoke, defensive coordinator, secondary coaches, asking what is going on, where are the breakdowns happening, telling their guys to figure it out and calm down. Well, the breakdowns are happening as they're not in the right gaps on runs up the middle, and they're biting on double moves. Two touchdowns that Lockett has scored have been on double moves by Lockett on the corners both Countess and Taylor Jake Waters pressured so threw a sidearm pass out wide to Tremaine Thompson we made it to the 46 a gain of five we're more than midway through the second quarter this is just the third possession 
for Kansas State. Michigan's had the ball twice. Two touchdowns on the two possessions for K-State. Two field goals for Michigan. And they've scored every time they've touched the ball, both of these teams. Jake Waters steps up, finds Gronkowski down the middle of the field. Inside the 20, and Gordon wrestles him down inside the 10-yard line. And if you're wondering, yes, he is one of those Gronkowski brothers, including the great tight end of the New England Patriots, Rob Gronkowski, who's here tonight. Well, again, this is the play little quarterback run. Desmond Morgan has to play man on that. Anytime you see him head down, running right at you with that big gap in between, then you have to jump man. If you don't, it's out of the deal. You're done. This is a very difficult play to defend, and the only way to defend it is to play man. Face mask by Gordon. They bring it half the distance to the goal. 46 yards on the play to Gronkowski. Freshman from Amherst, New York. Daniel Sams, the running quarterback back in the game. Trying to find a crease. And a late flag thrown in as Sams got knocked down at the three by Desmond Morgan and Jake Ryan. Holding. Offense number 78. A 10-yard penalty. We play first down. Cornelius Lucas, the senior from New Orleans. Another veteran. 26th career start. I will mention all Big 12 this year's first team all-conference last year. It's interesting in the field position that they're in. They're keeping Sam's in the ball game. Are they going to let him throw the ball? I would throw it to Lockett if I do throw it. He completes a high percentage, doesn't throw it often, but completed 73% for the year. First and goal from the 14. John Hubert has accomplished his goal. He battles down to the eight. But his larger goal entering the night beyond trying to win the game was to get to a thousand yards for the year and he has needed 32 yards rushing and he has 39 tonight just amazing the power for a 191 pound guy when he's carrying about 700 pounds on his back he's a tough kid good balance and vision excellent back for this system of offense Finished the regular season with his best career performance. 220 yards rushing in the win at Kansas. That Lockett one-on-one -on, -one on Taylor. Waters back in the game. Quick throw, and it is another touchdown for Lockett. His third. Everybody in the world knows where they're going. you got to rise to the challenge. You got to jam him with the line of scrimmage. If you let him free, he's going to beat you all day. See, there's no jam, Sean. He has too much room to work. You have to jam him to disrupt the route, and it's just a little back shoulder fade, and he works back to the football. But you have to get him on the line of scrimmage and make him go over the top. Three possessions for K State, three touchdowns. All of them on catches by Tyler Lockett. Ian Patterson adds the extra point. Greg Madison and Brady Hoke trying to solve the problems. The biggest one right now is Tyler Lockett, the junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Glenn Gronkowski got them close with a 46-yard catch and run. Four added on for the face mask. 21-6 in Tempe. The 2013 Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl is brought to you by the new luxuriously innovative lacrosse from Buick and the Spike Jones love story. Her now playing in select theaters everywhere January 10th. The Fiesta Bowl parade held this morning in downtown Phoenix. Dazzling array of marching bands and floats. Of course, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Wednesday here on ESPN. Baylor in Central Florida. The Baylor Bears are here tonight. Dennis Norfleet runs the kickoff back just across the 25-yard line. Here's Reese Davis. 
Sean, coming up at halftime, if it was Teddy Bridgewater's farewell performance, what a performance it was for Louisville as they took apart Miami. We'll also give you the latest on Bill O'Brien. It appears the Houston Texans have targeted him as their number one coaching option, and the Irish looked awfully good in pinstripes. Mark and Lou are here. We'll see you in a bit. Maurice, thank you. Shane Morris, the quarterback, he's leading the third possession for Michigan. They've kicked field goals each of the first two. Slings it out to the far side of the field. J.U. Chesson got driven back. They'll give him forward progress to the 30-yard line. Chesson is a freshman and a solid freshman season for Michigan. And also a very good blocker, Chesson, downfield for a wide receiver. And you just see the confidence growing in Shane Morris. And you know, he can afford to be a little bit late on his throws because he throws with such velocity that it makes up for maybe if he's mistimed the route a little bit with the receiver. He's been 13 out of 16 for 107 yards, despite the fact he's had no running game to help. He takes off, gets a couple. Pulled down by Marquel Bryant. Back up defensive end. Third down and four. The Wolverines are two out of four on third down. Keep your eye on number 44, Ryan Mueller, defensive end, matched up on Schofield. The offensive tackle, 11 and a half sacks this year for Mueller. Here's the Big 12 defensive lineman of the year. They move him all over that defensive line. He tried to get in the face of Morris, but the pass is caught by Funches for a big first down for Michigan with three minutes to go in the half. What a luxury to have a tight end that can play the slot receiver position. Funches with strong hands, a big target. And again, Shane Morris doing a good job of throwing away from the defender and putting it in the hands of Funches where he can protect the ball with his body from the defensive back. They list him as a tight end, but as you can see, they split him out wide very often. On the end around, Funches, and a good tackle by Trey Walker, senior team captain, Molatha, Kansas. Funches right there. Now you can see why he's not a running back because he missed his hole. He tried to bounce it right outside and he had to hold inside. Just a little bit of a and they're, they're trying to create ways to run the football and they can't run it inside. So they're trying to use their best athletes with Gallon and Funches to run sweeps and reverses. And try to perhaps use the speed of Justice Hayes who's back on the field and the fullback Joe Carriage. Pass dropped. Intended for Joe Reynolds, senior from Rochester, Michigan. Kip Daly had the coverage, starting cornerback. The third down and 10, with under two minutes to go in the half. Let's see if Kansas State gets a little exotic here. They're feeling, feeling a little bit confident in bringing some type of blitz to try to confuse the young Shane Morris because he's been on target with every throw. So you might want to disrupt his vision by bringing more than four. You see they've moved Miller, a Mueller inside now, lined up over a guard. He was well blocked, and Morris's throw is caught by Gallon, but it's short of the first down. Dorian Roberts the tackle. And decision time for Brady Hulk on fourth down and three from his own 46-yard line. I'd be inclined to go for it, Chris. I mean, I know it's the first half, but your defense isn't showing any signs of being able to stop K-State. It's a bowl game. I right. mean, you have nothing game. to lose. You know, you're you're seven and five. You got a young quarterback. Put him in a pressure situation. See if you can convert. And you're, you're absolutely let right. the clock run all the way down. Use a timeout and then make a decision. The coaches are more liberal. We've been watching it all bowl season and going for it on fourth down. Devin Gardner on crutches. Some speculation if he'll be back next year. He's a junior, but he's already graduated. Now board just says, I know of no reason why he wouldn't be back next year. Timeout, Michigan. 
with Wednesday, New Year's Day at 4.30 on ESPN. Not a lot of beauty in that one. Find, line up and find out who's tougher. Here we come. Right down your throat. Well, after using the timeout, Michigan has the punt team on the field. It's the field position. You might try a fake, but they don't. Wild. And a fair catch made by Tremaine Thompson. It looked like his own man bumped him, Kip Daly. It's a 34 yard punt. Bill Snyder in his 22nd year, over two stints at K State. It is the fifth season of his second tour of duty. Retired, then came back after being away for three years. Remarkable job. He's certainly heading for the Hall of Fame. The bowl record clearly rankled him. Trying to get their first bowl win since 2002 tonight. They've lost five in a row. They lead 21 to six in the final minute of the half. John Hubert runs up the middle. It looks like Coach Snyder will be content to take that 15 point lead to the locker room. They're not in any big hurry. They do have all three timeouts left as they operate from their own 27. I just think that's amazing to rebuild a program twice. It just absolutely amazes me. I know Pitt tried to do that at one time, I believe, with Johnny Majors. And yeah, what he's been able to do is just remarkable. But what he stepped into the first time was one of the worst programs yep. in the history of college football. And he's turned it into a consistent winner during his time. Big 12 champions a year ago. 74 years young. Said he hasn't given much thought to how much longer he wants to coach. He evaluates it at the end of each season. Very impressive performance. In the three possessions when they tried to score, they went right down the field and scored three touchdowns, all of them by Tyler Lockett. Five catches in the half, three of them for scores. Here's Shannon. Coach, I heard you moments ago just encouraging your defense. In your opinion, where are the major breakdowns happening? Well, we gave a big play on the double move and can't do that. That's one of the things we didn't want to do. Uh, not good on third downs right now as much as anything, and so we got to do a better job there coverage-wise and pressure on the pass. You guys didn't know how Shane Morris would respond to the game time pressure. What do you think? How's he done? Well, I think he's done a good job. You know, we got to help him on defense, obviously, and get something going in the kicking game also. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Good to see Brady looking better. He had a bad bout with food poisoning yesterday. <laughs> Halftime, 210 yards of offense for K-State. Waters was impressive at the helm. Lockett, the star of the half. Let's head to Reese Davis, Mark May, and Lou Holtz in the studio with a halftime report. Sean, I'm going to assume that Tyler Lockett was on Michigan's scouting report prominently. <laughs> they just can't do anything about it right now. His third career, three touchdown catch game, all of them coming since late October of this season. He has been a one-man wrecking crew for the Wildcats. No, he's done a tremendous job. As a whole, Kansas State's played exceptionally well. But Tyler Lockett, he comes from a family of great receivers at uh, K-State. Here he runs an in and back out. Just has such quickness, good composure. Watch him here on the double move here. And now a nice throw down the deep side. He has five catches, 63 yards, and three touchdowns. That was the second one. Here's the third one at the bottom of the screen. He's going to run a stop fade. He just has so much quickness. They have to double cover him. You can't play him man for man. How about that rangy southpaw, that freshman Shane Morris, coming in his first start under the bright lights in the bowl game. The way that he's played has been very impressive to me in this game. 15 of 19, 121, making great decisions, stepping up in the pocket, not afraid of the rush. He's oblivious to it, making good decisions with the football, patient in the pocket, and I love his arm strength. He's not afraid to fit it into tight corners like this play right here. Zip! Strong arm for the freshman. Now, full disclosure here as we... And welcome back to the 2013 Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl here on ESPN. At the half, Kansas State leading Michigan 21 to 6. Take a look at the first half stats brought to you by Mobile One. Extended performance. One number, Chris Spielman, that jumps out at me. The 10 yards rushing for Michigan. They had 14 yards on one rush, the reverse run by Devin Punches. So on their eight other rushing attempts, minus four yards and that's with no sacks allowed so they were just eight really bad running plays and that's been a problem all year meanwhile Shane Morris has been pretty good for Michigan I think better than pretty good 
It's been outstanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, Al Bore just did a good job of calling some easy passes, some screen passes, some three-step drops, and they started opening up. But they have to be able to run inside the tackles. Never in my lifetime would I say that a Michigan team struggles running inside. They always pride themselves on their physicalness inside. They don't have it tonight. They need to get it if they want to get back into this ball game, Sean. They will get the ball first to begin the second half. The true freshman, Shane Morris, making his first start at quarterback for Michigan. 15 out of 19, but no help from the ground game. Ian Patterson kicks off. Northfleet has to retreat. He was awfully shallow for that kickoff. Wasn't that deep in the end zone. Here's Shannon Spake. Well, Sean, you can't take anything for granted. That is exactly what Bill Schneider told his team in the very first meeting before the season began, and the message in the locker room was pretty similar here this evening. He said, you got to play like it's 0, zero. It's a message these guys have been hearing their entire lives. Come out and play hard. Schneider told me he knows that Michigan will have the ability to come back, and his guys just have to go out there and play. In order for them to come back, they got to establish a running game, and on defense, they got to get off the field on third downs. As Kansas State was four for four in the first half. As you see, 39 straight wins when leading at the half. Pitch to Justice Hayes. Well, Borges has been searching for a lot of creative ways to get the offense moving. Well, that's a big problem you, you as an offensive coordinator don't have the confidence in your inside run blocking to call running plays and you have to come up with fake reverses double reverses and fake handoff pitches to get some type of running game going now he's doing a good job of creating but for them to get solid they have to be able to pound the ball inside the tackles Devin Gardner their starter all year long a quarterback looking on Shane Morris the true freshman the quarterback that was a pass play to Hayes. Now the inside handoff. Derek Green, true freshman from Richmond, Virginia, taken down by Ryan Mueller. First carry of the ball game for Green goes for five and a first down. They're expecting big things from Green. Came in as a true freshman, a little overweight. As the season progressed, it started to become more of a contributor to this offense. To the play fake, Morris is passed a little too high. Tended for Jeremy Gallon. He gets a little turned around here off the play fake. This is a problem sometimes with the left-hander. He had to do kind of a, a, a reverse turn. And again, a ball that was catchable, a little high. But Jeremy Gallon can normally bring that down. But that's tough for the left-hander to run the play fake to the right side. Turned his head and lost sight and vision of the receivers down the field. Second and ten. Morris. Now Borges said it. Obviously he's not as athletic as Devin Gardner, not as prolific a runner. But the coach said Shane Morris a lot more athletic than they thought he was when they recruited him, as Al said. Not a blazing runner, but he can get you out of a few messes from time to time. Yeah, and you know what he does well, Sean? He's athletic in the pocket, moves his feet well, keeps his feet underneath him. That way he's able to set quick and throw. Third down and nine. There was only one punt by either team in the first half. It was by Michigan. Morris forced back in trouble and throws it incomplete over the head of Fitz Tucson. He's done a good job of getting rid of the ball. They've had problems all season long allowing sacks. They've given up 35 this year coming in. 111th in the country. Kansas State has had four tackles for loss as a defense tonight. That means Michigan's opponents have had 113 tackles for loss this year. That's the most in the country. Hard to believe a Michigan offensive line would have stats like that that this team has. Mad wild punts. Jermaine Thompson let it bounce, and the Wolverines will down it at the 18-yard line. Dennis Norfleet down there. 
Well, here comes Tyler Lockett. The star of the first half, all three touchdowns in this game scored by the junior from Tulsa. And two of them were on double moves. The first and second one were on double moves. And this one down here, when you're inside that 10 yard line, you have to get physical with a wide receiver like Lockett. He's too shifty and quick. He'll make you miss. You have to get up and jam him with the line of scrimmage to disrupt the timing between the receiver and the quarterback. If you don't, he will make you pay. Brady was right. Now, the Michigan offense can, needs help from this Michigan defense. Something. Option by Waters. The pitch to Hubert. And he got buried at the 22-yard line. Real Black celebrates the big hit, perhaps forgetting that he's down by 15 points. <laughs> well, maybe he's trying to get some enthusiasm into that Wolverine defense, but... You're right, Sean. I think they need to focus on getting off the field on third downs and perhaps creating some type of turnover to give their offense a little bit of a break. With it three plays of 20 or more in that first half, that's 52 allowed this year. 17 more than last season. Lock it. That fly sweep motion. Lost the football. It was popped out by James Ross the third. It was not a turnover in that first half by either team. Got a battle going down there. Dr. Trujillo, the tight end, indicating that K-State has it and the Wildcats do. Tamon Rooks, the right tackle at the bottom of the pile in the right place. Yeah, Rooks does a good job of digging it out, but a, a play that Michigan needed. And it's a good hustle play by the defense. James Ross the third comes from his backside linebacker position and gets that head across the bow and swipes down on the arms and the target of the football to knock it out. You have to come up with that. Again, your offense needs a defense to make the player get off the field. You're not lined up on defense and they're going to have to burn a timeout. Timeout. Michigan, their first of the half. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Back at the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl, 25th edition of this game. Second year Buffalo Wild Wings has been the title sponsor, formerly the Copper Bowl, the Insight Bowl. K-State leading early in the third quarter, 21-6. And facing third down and two from the Cats. 27 yard line. Michigan brought in their dime package, which means six defensive backs. Better coverage. Waters trying to take off on a quarterback draw, and he might have gotten there. Great patience. Where are they going to mark it? First down. Well, patience is the key here. Michigan came with a nice little nickel blitz where they brought number 25, DeMonte Thomas, off the edge. But that's a, uh, uh, an experienced quarterback understanding the yardage that's needed and being able to create the first down by being patient and always falling forward. Outstanding job of sustaining blocks by that offensive on the line. The play of a first down is under further review. We're going to review it. Check out the spot. Jim Fogeltance hasn't been very busy in the replay booth. The question is, was his knee down? Have to tell you that he got a good spot there. Looks like it right on the yellow line. The hand goes down, Wouldn't which he's okay. Down. His left knee looks like it's down there. I didn't think he benefited by about a half yard more than he should have received he also was held mightily crisp by a very nice hold by the outstanding <laughs> center bj finney first team all conference center for the second year in a row in the big 12. shannon was talking about bill snyder's message all year long don't take anything for granted just because you won the big 12 last year don't come back and think the success is just going to continue 
And he felt that was a problem at the beginning of the year. The team didn't really heed those words, that particularly on that offensive line. We had starters back across the line. Everybody thought they'd be great, and they weren't. They started the year with a loss in their opener to North Dakota State. So they're a good team, obviously, FCS champions, but that's a game we should have won, and it really threw everybody back on their heels. He kept preaching, focus on every day, don't take anything for granted. He said they finally got the message and practiced and prepared After better. further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. And I think Kansas State got a break there. Yeah. And you know, when you talk about Bill Snyder and, and where they were suffering because of that complacency, Sean was with uh, discipline problems on the field, turnovers, penalties. They had issues of giving up big plays early on, but they got it together. We had higher expectations in seven and five, but Bill Snyder said, even though it was a disappointing season based on the record, he's very proud of the way the team battled back. He said that is the character of this program to keep battling, working hard to get better, and they did. Chance for their first bowl win since 2002. Waters stepped into the pocket and throws, and it is caught at midfield by Tremaine Thompson. There's a flag now in the offensive backfield. I think you're going to get holding. Normally the, the call when it's in the backfield like that. I think Michigan would have liked that on the previous play. But you take it when you can get it. Personal foul, hands to the face. Offense number 78. A penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. We play first down. Cornelius Big. Lucas. Uh, right here, he's going to absorb a power rush. Here's Cornelius Lucas, number 78. Coming off the line. And Frank Clark does a little bit of a bull rush, and the big, tall Lucas gets the hands and does yeah. not let go. And that's a, <laughs> I mean, that's you know, you got to have the discipline to let go because you're, you're hurting your team. Well, if you're gonna get it, you might as well get your full money's worth. Frank Clark's a handful. We asked Greg Madison yesterday, who's had a great year for your defense. The first name out of his mouth was Clark, the junior defensive end, number 57 from Cleveland, Ohio, was a safety in high school. Waters again showing the ability to escape and he's on target. Tremaine Thompson back to midfield. Well, there's a mix up in coverage between Jared Wilson and Countess. The patience of Jake Waters to get the ball to the open receiver. Then you have Countess and Wilson mixed up. Watch them both go for the deep route and the corners rule. Quarterback's rules to read the corner, throw the corner. They're so worried about getting beat deep that they're leaving underneath coverage, leaving receivers wide open. 35-yard gain, another one of those plays of 20-plus allowed by Michigan. 53 and counting on the year. Mm -hmm. Four tonight. Jake Ryan came on a blitz. The pass is caught by Lockett. Boy, Waters is impressive, Chris. We've seen his ability to escape. And he's an accurate passer, 73% last year in junior college at Iowa Western when they won the national championship. And that is the all-time single-season record in junior college football. Well, Bill Snyder, like he told us, is not a fan of the two-quarterback system. And you look at Jake Waters, and they're just a more efficient offense with him operating this offense because they have two dimensions, running and passing. With Sam's... I mean, they can throw the ball, but they don't throw the ball down the field as effectively as they do with this young man. And that one's caught by Lockett for a first down. Well, you're going to see a well-coached route right here. It's going to be a nice little pick route between Thompson and Lockett. And Thompson's going out there to sell it, kind of boxing out like a basketball player. Getting the way of the receiver coming in underneath the cover locket, the corner rather. Seven catches, 75 yards. Hubert. They're comfortably in the field goal range now. He went to the 27 yard line. Jared Wilson, the safety, made the tackle. Sean, they don't know where to bounce the football. You see right there, number 42, Gedeon. Jumps outside, Gideon, excuse me, to, and the safety's coming outside. You have to jump inside as the linebacker to bounce the ball to the on-block player. 
And Kansas State is having their way. Run, pass, or doing what they want to do. That's why I really thought, if you said at the time, Brady Hoke should have gone for that fourth down late in the first half. I mean, you can't stop them. Kansas State's going up and down the field every time and holding the ball for a long time. There's a sack. Cam Gordon came on a blitz. And that's his team leading fifth sack of the year now. He takes over the team lead from Frank Clark with four and a half. Uh, just working one on one with the back and good athletic ability of avoiding the cut block and coming in high on the quarterback, hoping to get a strip on the football, but getting a sack. John Hubert couldn't pick up the blitz. Loss of seven. K State again chewing up all kinds of clock. Seven minutes to go. False start on Tavon Rooks. We're in the third quarter, no start. scoring yet here in the second Offense half. Offense number 73, five yard penalty, still second half. Tuesday, Capital One Bowl week continues. It's really more than a week, and oh, it is man. an extravaganza. Yes. Triple header on Tuesday, starting at 12:30, Arizona and Boston College in the Advocare V100 Bowl. Rice and Mississippi State in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, and then Duke trying to finish off a great season with a win, taking on Texas A&M in the Chick-fil-A Bowl, 8 o'clock Eastern, all Tuesday, and of course, all live on Watch ESPN. Second and 22. Waters steps into the throw. Man wide open again. Lock it. Took a pop. He's out of bounds at the 23. His dad loves it. Well, I love it, too, because he works back to the football. He doesn't wait for the ball to come to him. Again, they got him concerned with the double moves, and he can do what he wants to do. When you have a quarterback as accurate as Waters throwing you the football, you're going to have a big night as he moves up the list. His dad, the all-time leading receiver, recently passed his uncle. Passed his uncle this evening. The great Jordy Nelson of the Green Bay Packers. In the top five, Waters off his back foot, incomplete, over the head of Curry Sexton. It's a good call by Coach Madison there, bringing the blitz. Golden, number 35, getting in the throwing lane, forcing the high throw by Waters. Staying aggressive. First time K-State did not convert on third down tonight. Five out of six. And he's gotten the third down that often, chewing up chunks of yardage in the early downs. Well, here's Patterson trying a 40-yard field goal. Mention took over late in the year when Jack Cantelli was injured and the kickoff man a lot of the year. Walk-on kicker, and that's no good. Wide left. And Mark Kraus, the holder, might have had a little bit of a tough time. Good drive, but it gets nothing. The 2013 Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl is brought to you by the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live mas. And USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of current and former military members and their families. Back at the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl, K-State still leading 21 to six. That was the score at the half. Ian Patterson just missed a 40 yard field goal for the Wildcats, but they took seven minutes off the clock on that drive. Very few possessions in this game. Sustained drives by both teams. Michigan just two early field goals. Shane Morris, little screen for Jeremy Gallon. Well, one issue tonight for K-State, they have the backup snapper in there, Dalton Converse. We mentioned it looked like the holder Krause had a little trouble, but in the interest, it looked like he got it down, laces away, and the kicker just missed it. Yeah. They did talk about it on the sideline, snapper and holder. The only thing that discussion reminds me of was, was the ball snapped when the holder wanted it snapped. It looked like he was ready for it. He just missed, handled the football. And sometimes when a kicker pulls it, Sean, he may have a little adrenaline going, goes a little hard at it, which will force the pull on the kick. Marcus Height, the usual snapper, not here. 
Fabian Smith up the middle for a first down. Blake Slaughter and Dante Barnett made the stop for Kansas State. Now, if I'm Michigan, I might want to think about a little bit of a tempo offense if you have that ability with your true freshman quarterback. And the reason being that every time the Wildcats have the football, they seem to hold it for at least seven minutes a shot. Mm -hmm. You're three possessions down. Shane Morris been very solid. Seemed poised throughout as the true freshman made his first career start tonight. Play action pass. He's throwing a deep ball for Gallon. Well covered by Dorian Roberts. He's impressive as Dorian Roberts. A tough assignment against the shifty. Jeremy Gallon stays in his position, understands to be deep as the deepest, stays on an upfield shoulder, and discipline. And all the Michigan guys we talk to, coaches, players, one thing they talk about Kansas State to a man is that they play very hard and they do not make mental mistakes. Gallon, nowhere to run, and taken down back at the 30. Jonathan Truman, the primary tackler, but they were ready for that one. Well, it's just what we talked about, that everybody's always in position. It starts with number 21, Truman, number 22, coming up from his cornerback position, and Barnett forcing the ball back inside to the pursuing defenses from the backside. Discipline and understanding of where the ball needs to bounce. Kansas State executes at a high level. Goes in the books as a forward pass, a loss on the play. Just 22 yards rushing tonight for Michigan. Four-man rush on third down and 14. Morris throws, and it is dropped. Would have been a first down. Funches couldn't hang on, and as good a year as he has had, he's had problems with drops. He had five of them in their loss at Iowa. Well, when you're, one of your top offensive weapons cannot make a play for you because the ball is right there where it needs to be in between defenders, and Funches, a big play receiver, does not come up with a big play for the Wolverine mm -hmm. offense. Tough duty. I mean, they're just, they're off. They're just off tonight. The whole One of the offense. The players talked about is the ball spins a little bit differently, curves differently coming from a left-hander. But they've had almost a full month of practicing with Morris, working with the ones and twos in practice. And they should be used to it by now. Lane Thompson taken down immediately after fielding the punt at the 36-yard line. Jay Chesson made the tackle. He's done over the years, consistency over the years. One of the real good guys. Actually, he and Mac Brown are two of the great guys in coaching. Tremaine Thompson, the catch, breaks free and has a first down. Chased across by Desmond Morgan, but he got 11 and a first down. 158 wins at Texas. Only the late great Darrell Royal had more, a national championship, that great stretch of nine straight years with 10 wins or more. And that's probably what led to the end because the last four years they just couldn't live up to that high standard that he set. He did it with great class and dignity. One of the truly nice people that we've met. Yeah, absolutely. And you take a look at, at Mac, he cares so much about Texas and maybe the reason why he's stepping down because maybe it's time for somebody else to have the shot. It certainly wasn't handled well by all parties, but he handled his part of it, it seemed, with his usual class and grace. John Hubert. Got across midfield. You know, it's interesting to see a team huddle. <laughs> We're not used to that all year, Sean. We see so many spread teams and tempo, but you see a team that huddles and executes, balanced offensively. 20 runs, 17 passes tonight. Well, it's been another hallmark of K-State offense under Bill Snyder. They like to be balanced. Perry Sexton, one of the smartest guys on the field, three times first team academic all Big 12. Blake Gideon tripped him up with help from Raymond Taylor. 
Sexton's a junior. For all three years, he's been eligible to be first team academic All Big 12. He has been. He's a 3 6 student in marketing and turned down a chance to play at Harvard. Got accepted at Harvard, but decided he'd rather play in his home state of Kansas for the Wildcats. Harvard or Harvard of Central New York? No, Harvard, the, the other Harvard. Okay. The one in Cambridge, <laughs> Massachusetts. Terrific football program. What a nice job Tim Murphy's done. Talk about excellent coaching jobs. Waters. Looks like he has a first down. They chased him out at the 32 with Cam Gordon in hot pursuit. Well, again, it comes back to discipline and understanding rush lanes. Cam Gordon does chase him down with great pursuit, but he jumps inside, and the smart water sees, well, he's losing contain because he's jumping inside, leaving the giant hole outside, in which he takes advantage. That's a little bit of what I'm seeing with Michigan on defense is the beyond discipline and trying to do too much. You get out of your responsibility, your gap, and you open up holes. Well, they've gone to the quote-unquote running quarterback, but Waters just ran for his fourth first down of the night. Greg Madison said Waters is considered their throwing quarterback, but he's a dangerous runner, too, and he's proven that. Sams throws one. Look at drop the ball. Take his scholarship away. <laughs> I bet you his dad's up there saying, I never dropped one like that. And let's see what we have here. Again, it's just a little shake and bake in this speed and smoothness and quickness. And oh, Sam's boy. delivers a perfect ball. Waters wants to see his buddy Sam throw a touchdown pass. Well, his first pass of the night was right on target. Kevin Lockett can't believe yeah, it. I never dropped one like that. His son has another year to go. He's going to be their all-time leading receiver. Break his dad's mark, you would think, if he stays healthy. He had the two best receiving games in K-State history this year. Whoa, Sam's fumbled! And it looks like Michigan had the ball. They had several bodies at the bottom of the pile. Looked like Mario Ojamudia had a first crack at it. And somebody got it for the maize and blue. Jake Ryan, first turnover of the game. For either team. Well, Sam seems to have the ball secure. Desmond Morgan with a wrap up and having a conscience to go ahead and pull that ball out. And a big play for the Wolverine defense that helped that offense, and maybe they can get some momentum or some juice with them. Graded off the turnover. They needed a break. Now they need to score and move quickly. The Wolverines, under a minute to go, third quarter in this very fast-moving game. And they were moving too quickly on offense. Looked like a false start on the left end of the line. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 84, 10-yard penalty, still first down. A.J. Williams, one of the tight ends. See Taylor Lewan right there tapping him on the head, encouraging Taylor's been an outstanding leader. Two-time All-American. Back Sean. home. Yep. From right up the road in Cave Creek, Arizona. Taylor told us yesterday that's about 45 minutes north of here. He played his senior year of high school not far away from here at Chaparral High School. And that's where the Wolverines practiced all week. So it was more than a little bit odd to be back at his high school. Mueller couldn't get to Morris, got a finger on him. The pass incomplete over the head of Gallon. But when we talked with Lawan yesterday, Chris, that was a very interesting story that he told us that I didn't know. He played at a different high school prior to his senior year. Cactus Shadows, the Falcons. He was a nose tackle with no interest, not a scholarship offer, nobody coming after him. Goes to Chaparral, plays with Craig Rowe who was a terrific defensive prospect, one of the tops in the country. They move him to left tackle. Rowe winds up going to Michigan. Taylor said, I'm not even sure Michigan really wanted me. It might have been they wanted Craig so much, they just kind of threw me in there as well. And he's become one of the best offensive linemen in the country. Look out, Morris had it knocked away as he wound up to throw. Michigan has the ball, at least for the moment. It's a fumble as Mike Moore, the linebacker, knocked it out of the hands of Morris. Now you can see right here they do a little bit of a stunt game, and 
Moore does not give up, comes back and retraces his steps, and the discipline to come after the football as opposed to the big hit. Michigan gets a break by falling on the football. But going back to LaJuan, Sean, I know that he's taken a lot of heat this year. I think he's outstanding. He's athletic, he's physical, he's mean, and I can see why he's the number two ranked offensive lineman by Todd McShay. And he's he going to be he's a, at his best year. I agree with him. Well, the coaches feel that way too. They struggled on the interior of the offensive line. The end of the quarter. Neither team scored in the third. It's still a 15 point lead for K State. Earlier this evening, the Direct TV drive to the national championship bus swung by Sun Devil Stadium. It's on its way to the Vizio BCS national championship game in Pasadena on January 6th. That bus has logged a lot of miles all over the country following the biggest stories in college football all season long. Great snacks on that bus. Delicious Buffalo Wild Wings. It's typical of you. There were so many great <laughs> attributes of that bus, and you went right for the snacks. Yes, I did. As usual. Third and 15 for Shane Morris, first play of the fourth quarter. He's under duress. Throws a wobbler incomplete. Diving attempt by Jeremy Gallon. Couldn't come up with it. Dante Barnett, the coverage. Oh, missed opportunity for the Wolverines again. Going in, coming in the fourth quarter, 22 rushing yards. 131 through the air, 153 total yards. Dominant performance by the Wildcat defense. In that Ohio State game, the offensive performance by Michigan against the Buckeyes looking more and more like an aberration. But for the most part, late in the year, the offense was dreadful for Michigan. Good punt by Matt Weil. Might have outkicked the coverage, as they say. Tremaine Thompson brought it back across midfield. Flag down near where Thompson caught it, so it might be coming back. Matt Weil, been very actively involved in tackles tonight. His punt went 52 yards, the return 29, if it stands. Let's go back to the Ohio State game. I, I really was so impressed with Devin Gardner playing with the foot injury throughout the third quarter, throwing for 450 plus yards or whatever it was. 451. Yeah, they were able to run the ball. And uh, I think Devin Gardner, I hope he comes back because I think he can improve and he gives this Michigan team the best chance to improve on its record if it stands as now the score of seven and six. You know, face mask against yeah. the Wildcats. Each team flagged on that punt. And Devin Gardner's 451 against Ohio State was the second highest single game passing total in Michigan history. Broke his own record that he set earlier in the year when he had 503 against Indiana. He had what many people thought was an up and down year early in the year plagued by turnovers. Here's the call. There are fouls by both teams and they will uh, set. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 35. Personal foul. Face mask. Kicking team number 53. Offsetting, replay, fourth down. Will Davis penalized for K-State. Mario Ojemudia for Michigan. But Gardner, I mean, he's a prolific talent. Yes, he is. Second highest single season passing total in Michigan history this season with his 2,960 yards. And that's really without much of a running game. No. And... The thing that he needs to improve on is his decision making and protecting the football. Got careless with the ball. Some costly turnovers, but second year coming into a full time starter, I think he has a chance to be really, really good and, and help his future in the NFL, Sean, for coming back. Well, John LeVar threw for more yards in a season than what Gardner did this year. So wild punts again. Another pretty good one. I mean, Thompson taken down immediately. Well covered by Jeremy Jackson. Here's Shannon. Well, Sean, Devin Gardner, you see him talking to Morris right now. I mean, he has been his biggest supporter during this game, spending a lot of time with him on the sideline. You also see that walking boot on Devin Gardner's foot. 
I spoke with the athletic trainer. He says he feels confident, 100% confident that Devin Gardner will make a full recovery. With injuries like this, they don't exactly know how long it will take for him to recover. He hasn't put any pressure on that foot, but he has been doing some cardio work, just trying to stay in shape. And maybe a little bit earlier today, we saw him out here passing the football with some of his guys before the, the rest of the team arrived. So he's enjoying this bowl week, but you know he'd like to be out there playing. Waters wanted to throw that pop pass, wasn't there, and he got spun down for a loss by Joe Bolden, the linebacker. It's a nice job by Jake Ryan taking away the pop pass, not jumping inside, seeing that tight end come and look for it. And Jake Waters with the discipline not to throw it. That's like stopping your swing in the middle of your backswing for the drive. Now, uh, Tiger Woods. Yep. And Sean McDonough. Anybody, yes. My swing is so slow, it's easy to stop, though. Tiger has a little more swing speed. Have you ever heard of anybody, by the way, uh, have a hamstring graft or ACL surgery like Jake Ryan did? <laughs> Screen to Hubert. And he's tackled at the 34. We visited with Jake Ryan earlier in the year. We mentioned he came back in seven months from ACL surgery. He told us they took some of his hamstring, that there are fibers in your hamstring and they took some of the smaller ones out and used that to craft his new ACL. I've heard a lot of the types of ACL injuries that I actually have heard of that because I had a friend that had that done but also the one that I always found interesting was the cadaver replacement where they take an ACL of a cadaver and put it in there. At least it's somebody else's. Yeah. <laughs> he said he hasn't noticed any difference. You know the hamstring doesn't bother him. Third down and 12. They need a stop to the Wolverines, and it's Sexton, the smart guy, with a first down. Pretty good receiver, too. Was well, a good receiver because he works back to the football. All these Kansas State receivers understand that the ball, they have to come back to it to create separation between them and the defensive back. It's a well coached football team, and I can't tell you how I am impressed with Waters standing in the pocket and being able to deliver balls right on target. He's excellent. The offensive line has done a good job of providing a pocket for Waters to step up and throw on key third downs. Yeah, there's six out of seven on third down. Hubert. Hubert. Knocked down by Thomas Gordon. Capital One Bowl Week. With great action on Tuesday. A triple header, Arizona and B.C. In the Advocare V100 Bowl, Rice and Mississippi State in the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. That's at four, and then it's topped off at eight. For 24, Duke, number 21, Texas A&M. Perhaps the last look at Johnny Manziel. Chick-fil-A Bowl, Capital One Bowl Week. Tuesday on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Steve Adazio has done a great job at Boston College this year. Really has. Yep. Done a terrific job of playing to what he had. He wants to be a spread offense team, but they weren't set up that way with the talent he inherited. So they went to Andre Williams with that power running game, and he had a tremendous year. Lockett, another catch. Run down by Jake Ryan with that hamstring graft for an ACL, moving nicely. Yes, he is, and Lockett also moving nicely with a little shake and bake, but the thing about the wide receivers here, the reason why he's able to make this type of move is because they never have to work to catch the ball. It's been that way the whole night. Waters is on fire. Over 100 yards receiving now for Lockett. 104 on nine catches. Sexton again. Thomas Gordon tackle him. Blake Count is there to finish him off. First down, they're inside the 25-yard line to the 23. Pre-snap recognition. You're not covering down the number three wide receiver. You have Desmond Morgan jumping inside with Cam Gordon coming off the outside. He has that gap. That area is vacated. On the snap of the football, Desmond Morgan has to go to the number three wide receiver counting from the outside in. He does not, and a lack of execution once again by the Wolverine defense. Under 11 minutes to go. Neither team has scored since the half. It's before the half. Hard to score at halftime. Hubert stacked up. I don't think everybody, anybody's ever done that. <laughs> I'm going to refrain from commenting. I guess it's late enough in most of the country. Yes. <laughs> Ten and a half minutes to go. Who's your MVP tonight? I mean, Lockett looked like the easy choice early, yeah. but how about... 
I'm that Waters, guy. That 17 guy. out of 20 for 243 touchdowns, and he's had some key runs. Four first downs running. I'm going to penalize Lockett from the MVP from dropping his fourth mm -hmm. touchdown, and Waters, is, Waters has been outstanding tonight. Here he goes again. First down. Fifth time he's rushed for a first down. He's carried eight times. Five of them have moved the markers, and Jared Wilson made the tackle. Well, this is a little fake that little pop pass, allowing Nemechek to come across the line of scrimmage to get the good block. And not only is he patient waiting for receivers to get open downfield, but he's also been patient running the football. A little patience right there. Then show a nice burst to get through the hole. Moving the ball and taking time off the clock again. Slides down with a two yard gain. How bright is the future for the Wildcats? You have Waters coming back next year, Lockett coming back next year, losing Hubert. We'll have to replace three starting offensive linemen who are veterans. A lot of talent coming back. And then the same is true of Michigan's very young team. Under nine minutes to go. The option, the pitch to Hubert. With a shoulder to cross the boundary by Wilson. Lockett, by the way, with 100 yards receiving tonight. That's the seventh 100 yard game of the year. That's one off the school record for a single season set by Jordy Nelson. His nine catches the most ever in a bowl game. For a K-State receiver, this is the 17th bowl appearance in school history. And overall, it's his ninth career 100-yard game. The school record is 10 by two terrific receivers, Quincy Morgan and Jordy Nelson. So Lockett will break that next year, assuming he comes back. A blitz on third and three. Waters had time. It was incomplete. Sexton wanted a flag against Demonte Thomas. Interesting to see coach Snyder going for the field goal. I mean, I, I understand that, but the way your offense is moving, I wouldn't have been surprised if they go for it. But you know Lockett is good, Sean, when any, everybody in the world knows that they're targeting him and there's nothing you can do to stop it. <laughs> Teams can't take it away. Patterson missed from 40. See if the new snapper and holder execute. They do, and... This one's good from 22. And that's the right play. Get ahead by 18. Now it's a three score game. Patterson's field goal, the only points of the second half for either team. Sports Center is next. These folks know the drill. Yeah, they do, don't they? They come ready. I'd like to see Coach Borges and Brady go a little tempo now with their young quarterback to see how he handles that type of situation. And you need to if you want to get back in this ballgame. Down by three scores. Patterson's kickoff down to Dennis Northley. Whoa! Got upended as he crossed the 20. Yeah, Truman shot in there and took out a bunch of walls and made a pile. Knocked him down. The 2013 Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports, and Buick. Visit your local Buick dealer to see why thousands of people are switching to Buick each month. Beautiful night in the Valley of the Sun. It was in the low 60s at kickoff. It's cooled off a bit. 53,284 here. Third largest in the 25 year history of this bowl game, formerly the Copper and Insight Bowl. Second year is the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. Shane Morris zips one. J.U. Chesson fighting for every yard. Taken out of bounds by Blake Slaughter. Gain of three. Under eight minutes to go. Did his first career start for Shane Morris. Grew up a huge 
Michigan fan dreaming throughout his life as long as he can remember about being the quarterback. His favorite player growing up was John Navarre. He said when he was seven years old, he had a John Navarre jersey. Heard that John Navarre was signing autographs at a mall nearby. Went and had John Navarre sign that jersey. He still has it in their home outside Detroit. Whoops! Justice Hayes did not prevail. What a thrill for the Morris family. They're all here tonight. Mr. Morris. Dad on the right, Bruce, Jennifer. To his left, that's brother Brent, who was one of his receivers, Shane's receivers at De La Salle High School last year. He's a senior now this year and a prospect, tight end. Shane Morris said when he called his mother earlier this week when it was confirmed that he would make his first career start, his mother cried. Yeah, that's what a what a thrill it is for them to see Shane perform tonight and get his shot. He's done a great job. Sister Gracie's also here tonight. Dilio, the intended receiver, was broken up by Randall Evans, another one of those former walk-ons who's become an important player for K-State out of Miami, Palmetto High School. Sean, you look at it, and with Shane Morris heading into next year, you know if you're Al Borges and Brady Hoke that you'll have a capable backup behind Devin Gardner and one that can move the football for you. And he's only going to get better. He's a hard worker, smart, picks things up. And tonight he passed a big test and proved that he could handle the pressure of playing in the game. Second straight three and out for Michigan. Wow, another good punt. Tremaine Thompson. Flags are down. Dennis Norfleet made a tackle at the 31 yard line. 56 yard punt, 14 on the return, but the laundry has to be sorted out. During the return, holding, receiving team number 57, a 10 yard penalty, first down, Kansas State. Colborne. Couchman called for the penalty. Just glad we had a chance to say his name. Colborne Couchman. Among those in attendance tonight, proud Kansas State graduate, class of 96, Eric Stone Street, you know him as Cam on the ABC hit comedy Modern Family. A little glum, but. I just look at him and laugh. You watch Modern Family, uh, that's not the funniest show on TV. I know you enjoy oh, it. I watch it all the time, and he is hysterical. I, of course, keep tuned into the ESPN family, but... Uh... No, you don't. <laughs> 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 but ever since you told me about that show, I'm tempted I, to I, ask you to name I, any <laughs> other TV show. It's not just ABC. <laughs> oh, there's a face mask. Water's got his head spun around. I think every official on the field threw the flag. Willie Henry. Personal foul, face mask. Defense number 69, a 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. Another product out of Glenville High School in Cleveland, Ted Ginn, Whoa. senior. He uh, has a bright future, Sean. Very athletic at 306 pounds, and that's what Greg Madison's excited about is this, this young defense. And, and next year, they're not young. You can't use that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time to start playing. Well, they took advantage of the 15 bowl practices to take a long look, give more important reps, fundamental work to a lot of the young players, particularly freshmen. And Greg Madison said Henry's a guy who really made strides during the bowl practices. Hubert. Gain of one. Six and a half minutes to go. Friends, you can get close to all the action wherever you are with the new Sports Center app. Blazing fast scores, the hottest news and highlights, access to your favorite sports center talent 24-7 via Twitter. You can download the new Sports Center app right now by dialing star star SC from your phone. That's a cool, cool app. I I do use that. I try to keep up with the NBA off that Sports Center app. Actually a big NBA fan. I know that. That is actually yeah. true. We wanted to go to a game here in Phoenix with your brother, the GM. Yeah, how about that? Ryan? Phoenix Suns playing a home game tonight. Unfortunately, we're going to be here all week because we're here for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Wednesday night. But the only home game the Phoenix Suns play 
while we're here is tonight. The 17 and 11 Phoenix Suns under first year GM Ryan McDonough. Timeout with 5.48 to go. Back in Tempe, Arizona, the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. Kansas State looks like it's going to end its five game bowl losing streak dating back to 2002 when they beat the team that plays its home games in this stadium, Arizona State. That was in the 2002 Holiday Bowl. A little early was Frank Clark. Or was he drawn off? No, I think the linesman got him for offsides. That's amazing that Frank Clark came in, and you mentioned it earlier, Sean, as a, as a free safety at 212 pounds, now plays at 273 pounds. Offside, defense number 57 in the neutral zone, causing reaction by the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, as a junior, Greg Madison said Frank's already told the coaches he will be back for his senior year. And Greg said he's always been a guy who make a big play, but this year he's made improvement in being much more consistent down to down. Yep. And, and he's only going to get better. He works at it. He studies the game. He's really played the position two, two years. A big penalty makes it a much more manageable third down, and they convert. Lockett has the first down. It's the same pick play that they ran earlier in the half. Tremaine Thompson throws the, the pick or something Ryan McDonough would be proud of, a good solid box out. You see Tremaine Thompson come in, see there's the box out right there, and Lockett just comes underneath and does a rub route, and they get away with the face mask. Yeah. 10 catches for Lockett, 116 yards, adding to his K-State record. Three touchdowns, they're seven out of nine on third down. Channing Stribling made the tackle. As you said, might have gotten away with the face mask. A freshman getting some playing time. Jermaine Thompson. And I know the coaches wanted to get Stribling in there tonight. Both of his parents serve in the Army. His mom, just a couple of weeks ago, returned from a tour in Afghanistan, Sanjay. When they played Ohio State a month ago, he was very worried about his mother because they communicated at least once or twice a week. He hadn't heard from her in quite a while, so you can imagine oh, the concern boy. that he had. Finally, he heard from her. She's here tonight. Dad Dennis is also here. He's about to head back on another tour. He spent all of Channing Stribling's senior year in high school last year, in uh, two years ago, rather, in South Korea. Channing's grown up all over the country and in other parts of the world, including Germany, as a child of two people who served with great distinction in the Army. We thank them. Yes, sir. And I like what Stribling did right there. He got up and challenged Lockett and actually got physical with him at the line of scrimmage. That's something we've been calling for all night. He did it, but I uh, can't imagine, you know, the, I mean, that's the lifestyle they know. But uh, what courageous parents to do that, serve their country, raise a fine young man like Channing. Third down and five, four and a half minutes to go. They've been chewing up plenty of time with just about every drive. That last field goal drive took six minutes plus off the clock, 6.19. Waters got belted by Thomas Gordon as he threw it. One thing you can say about Greg Madison, he's coming after you. He's not going to stop bringing a safety blitz with Gordon coming late, forcing a high ball with a hit on Jake Waters. And they force the first K-State punt of the night. Mark Kraus. And it bounces into the end zone. Well, as we mentioned, Mark Cruz here in the beautiful Valley of the Sun for a few more days for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, New Year's Day. Two programs each appearing in the BCS game for the first time. And, of course, it'll be the last time because it's the last year of the BCS. Central Florida and Baylor. They're in a bowl, the Knights of Central Florida, for the fourth time in five seasons. School record win total. Baylor in a bowl for the third straight year with that ridiculous offense. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll 53 tell you too. points a game plus. It's insane, but Phil Bennett's done a great job with the defense. We saw them last year, Sean. They were bad, but they've turned into outstanding defense. Whoa. Morris's pass. Ooh. Almost intercepted. Should have been intercepted. And George O'Leary will be calling the defense for Central Florida. Yeah, Jim Fleming, their defensive coordinator, took the head coaching job at Rhode Island within the last week or so. so George O'Leary, with a background on defense, will be coordinating the defense as well. I mean, they're a tough enough team to stop. Yeah. You know, your full complement of coaches. Big underdog, Central Florida, but they've had a thrilling year. A lot of exciting last-minute victories. They got a quarterback, they got a chance. Blake Bortles is a quarterback. Good catch in the flat by Toussaint, but he had to hit the ground. And we talked, Chris, about these two teams, how disappointing the 7-5 and five record is, but how close it could have been to being so much better. Michigan, despite all the problems, four of their five losses by four points or less. And they had the four overtime loss at Penn State. They had the loss in the regular season finale by one point when they couldn't get the two-point conversion in the final seconds against Ohio State. Gallon the catch. And that's a big catch for him because that gives him the single season receiving yardage record. He's a really good football player. I look forward to watching him in the NFL. Tough. Love those guys. 1,339 yards receiving this season. Breaks the mark of 1,330 by Braylon Edwards back in 2004. Interception. Dante Barnett. Luan tries to stop him and does inside the 10-yard line. Looking like Blake Slaughter tipped it. And Barnett has his team leading fourth interception of the year. Yeah, this is the one right here with Blake Slaughter because the ball wasn't thrown with any loft and Blake Slaughter is going to get a hand on it but you're going to see where Shane Morris trusts his arm a little bit too much and they run a little shake route with Funches he throws it on the line where he should have thrown it over the top and I'm going to show you why Taylor Wan's going to be a number one draft pick when you have an offensive tackle that could run like that and save a touchdown and never quit on his team I know he gets a little crazy in his extracurricular activity after a play but he gives you everything he has on every single play. And he says he had no regrets about coming back for his senior season. Hubert got down to the goal line, but not in. You can see right there, the forearm is down, short of the goal line, and once the forearm hits, the ball is down and marked at that spot. I don't think Taylor Lewan's going to have fond memories of Sun Devil Stadium. He told us yesterday his last high school game was in the state championship here as a senior. They lost 38-0 to Saguaro, their rival. And the last game of his college career is going to be a loss in Sun Devil Stadium. Hubert punches it in from the one-yard line. And that is now seven straight games with 30 points or more for K-State. The only two teams with longer active streaks of 30 points plus are the two that are going to play in the national championship game. Florida State and Auburn. 14 in a row for Florida State with 30 or more in nine straight games with that point total for Auburn. Ian Patterson for the extra point. They're getting the Gatorade bucket ready for Coach Snyder. Ooh, oh. he's too slow. Even at 74, <laughs> he's got good moves. <laughs> and then he kind of said, That's okay, you got right. me. That's not right. <laughs> he's pointing at the clock. Yep. It's not over yet. It's all about teaching, always. <laughs> 2.25 to go. I hope I'm moving like that at 74. Actually, good back pedal. Yeah, that stung him in the eyes, too. Lateral movement. I read something the other day, you know, New Year's resolution. I can't remember who wrote it, but one of the things they wrote was they'd like to see the Gatorade bath just go away. You know, it's kind of been there, done that. The coaches uh -huh. don't like it. I agree. Well, this uh -huh. man's 74 years old. It's a chilly night now in the <laughs> 50s. It's 
talked about him. I asked him about, you know, the challenges of this job. And one of the things that's very challenging in college coaching is the recruiting part of it. He still enjoys that. And he's got a veteran staff with him. Well, he's a fascinating man. You know, he said he's been reviewed at the end of every year. So this is perhaps could be his last game. He didn't give us any indication that he was going to walk away. But he said, I focus on the task each day. And when you talk to him, you know him, you talk to the people around him, that's what he does. I mean, he's not thinking about anything a half hour from now. He's thinking about what's going on right now. When we talked about the turnaround job that he did when he first got there, 14 coaches before him combined for a winning percentage of under 27%. His first stint, one two-thirds of his games, Ron Prince came in, had won winning year two sub 500 years bill came back and then the winning has returned you know, a thing that would help me with my decision if i were in his situation is i have waters and lock it back that's right that's a big help to come back you know what he, he obviously we saw yeah. he keeps himself in good shape he's sharp as a tack yeah when you talk to him there's no indication that his mind is slipping at all I and mean, he is on top of every facet of this program and it seems like he continues to enjoy it. Morris throws. Snatched out of the air by Drew Dillio got ridden down by Blake Slaughter under two minutes to go. Well and, and Sean an indication of what you're pointing about he doesn't change as soon as he got hit with the, the Gatorade bath he's pointing to the clock at Ryan Mueller his guy that he really cares for. Right, we got three minutes left. Oh, he's that's teaching. Him. Yep, that's him. Consistent. Shane Morris pulls it down and runs. And look at him go. Dylan Schellenberg chases him out. Nice call by Al Borges. Shane Morris patient, letting it set up, getting a good block by Fitz Toussaint. Showing his athletic ability that they raved about. It's not Devin Gardner, but it certainly can be efficient. The family enjoys it. 40 yard run. Well, there was even some speculation. People in Michigan asked you, what happens if Morris goes out and has a huge night? Do you have a quarterback controversy all winter long? My, I think yeah. Morris has been solid, but Devin Gardner, he's healthy, is still their man. This late flurry is going to get them over 200 yards of offense. And Chris, I was stunned preparing for the game. That Ohio State game, the regular season finale, was the only game in the last four when they had more than 175 yards of total offense in the game. Yeah. I, it's just, you know, that it's they have to be able to find a way, and it'll be a big emphasis this spring to run the football. And I'm sure Coach Hoke will have a very physical spring with their front sevens on both sides. But there's no quarterback controversy in my no. opinion. I think he's got a very bright future, and that throw right there shows he's a big-time guy. Toussaint to the end zone, and a touchdown, the first of the night for Michigan. It's good for the senior from Youngstown, Ohio, Fitzgerald Toussaint getting a touchdown in his last game for as a Wolverine. Well executed and patient by Shane Morris on the option. That's what you like to see a guy that's been in the program to go out with some kind of memory like Fitz Tucson getting that touchdown. Disappointing senior season. Averages three and a half yards per carry. Michigan's going to go for two. 115 to go, trailing 31 to 12. Gallon throws it. Nice play. Justice Hayes, the two point catch. That is a real nice play. A lot of people will have that in their playbook. I'm telling you, this is something, especially after they ran this play so many times. Justice Hayes sneaking into the flat. Jeremy Gallon with a nice toss. That will be copied, I promise you, because I'd copy that in a heartbeat. We'll give Al Borges credit for trying to do as much as he can to get the offense going. They've had a lot of creativity tonight. Here's Shannon. Well, 
Sean, you know this is the last game for a lot of seniors, a lot of guys leaving the schools after this year. There's also a last game for a guy on the Michigan sideline, Ron Falk. He has been the equipment manager since 1974. He has been on the Michigan sideline wearing the maize and the blue since 1974. And he is leaving and retiring this evening. He's seen a lot of games. I talked to him before the game. I congratulated him. He kind of looked at me and he laughed. And he's like, what are you congratulating me for? I'm still going to work. I'm just not going to be on the sideline. But, you know, great, great career for that man. Well, you know, I, I met him when I came on my official visit to Michigan. And it's interesting. I saw him oh, when we did the Nebraska game. And he came up and he recalled meeting me and going over and talking to me, telling me about the equipment in Michigan. Just a, a great guy. And loves the blue he's a great career congratulations there's John Falk well also the end of an era in the Michigan broadcast booth they're going for the onside kick Wiles kick goes out of bounds and the flag flies well, this is going to be the last game behind the microphone for one of the great voices of college football Frank Beckman 33 years yeah. behind the mic calling it a career at the end of this year he followed the legendary Bob Eufer which is impossible to do I love Bob Eufer there's Frank uh, just be kind of rocking back and forth behind that pole yeah, thank Frank. you Chris what a nice guy Frank is too he's a pro Bob Eufer for 42 years and then Frank for 33 that's 75 years in a row of uh, broadcasting that's about as good as it gets you know, this is an emotional moment for Frank. 33 years, as you said, Sean, and loves Michigan, loves Michigan football, passionate about it. Has an outstanding morning radio show up there. Just a, been a, a voice of Detroit area for a long time. Sam's is going to come in to take the snap. If Frank was worried about his first game of his career and his last when we talked to him before the game tonight, they hand it off to Robert Rose, the bag of running back. Frank said he broke it in 1981. Michigan was number one in the country. First game they lost to Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. Now, what a terrible way to break in. You know, the fans are going to blame them, the new messenger. <laughs> they said, if I lose tonight in my last game, Notre Dame is going to take over by a fraction right. of a percentage point as the winningest program by percentage of all time in college football from Michigan. I don't want to go out with that happening. Notre Dame overtaking Michigan. That's going to happen. I've known Frank for 20 years, and after the game, I want to remind him of that. <laughs> That's the kind of relationship we have. I've known him when I, my eight years in Detroit, and Frank was always good to me. An outstanding pro. Sports Center comes your way next, and if you want to watch the trophy presentation of the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl presented by Capital One, it's right after the game on ESPN3. Hosted by the incomparable Shannon Spake. Oh, outstanding. I want to mention too, Sean in the broadcast booth is Jim Branstetter. Does an outstanding job, was an analyst for the Lions also on their radio network. Yeah, when you played and yeah, still is, I believe. Yeah, he is. Robert Rose gets the carry. Well, it was a tough call. I mean, I think we could have gone for co-players of the game, which I always think is a cop-out. Jake Waters, the player of the game, not just the 271 yards passing, but five first downs running. And he ran for 46 yards as well. He is the Capital One player of the game. But it wouldn't surprise you if the, that trophy for the MVP, there's the championship yeah. game trophy, if it went to uh, Lockett. Lockett as well, Tyler Lockett. 10 catches, 116 yards, all three of the touchdown passes thrown by Waters. Went to lock it. Sam's runs, and that'll be a story of the offseason. He says, if I'm going to be backing up Waters next year, I want to play wide receiver. So we'll see if that happens. Better work on his two-point route running then. Great performance by K-State. They snap that five-game bowl losing streak. Now seven and ten all time in bowl games. Bill Snyder asked a lot this week about the bowl streak. He said, if I knew the answer, we wouldn't have lost five in a row. But they solved that problem tonight. They win 31 to 14 over Michigan. Six loss season for Michigan. Fourth time in six years. Wow. Live coverage of the postgame trophy ceremony presented by Capital One is on ESPN3 in just a few minutes.
Stay tuned now for Sports Center. So long, everyone.